All right, guys, I have a quick uh, demonstration here for you. So we want to find the derivative of this function g. So we're in section 3.6. This is an inverse trig function. Now it's arc cosine, so that's inverse cosine. The only thing kind of tricky here is that we have you know, x over 8 in the argument here. Now, just to be clear here, there are parentheses here like that. We don't usually write them, but they are there. So we have 9 times arc cosine x divided by 8. Now, recall that the derivative of arc cosine, so if you just have, uh, let's see, arc cosine of u, and you take the derivative of it, okay, that is negative u prime divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. So in this case over here specifically we have u equal to x over 8. Okay, so let's see here. We could say that g prime, g prime of x equals, okay, we know we have a 9 out front here a coefficient of 9, so we can actually factor out the 9, then take the derivative. So even though I'm, I, I won't even usually write this step right here, I'll, I'll be thorough in this case, x over 8, like so. We factor out the 9, then take the derivative of the resulting function. Now, this results in 9, okay, times this derivative. Now, it says to take the, uh, our, our rule here says on the top to take the derivative of u. So we'll say the derivative with respect to x of x over 8. It needs to be negative. And then we're going to divide by the square root of 1 minus u squared. So x over 8 squared. Okay, so this is kind of a bad looking fraction right now, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be too terrible to deal with. Let's see here. So we still have a 9 times this fraction. Now what is the derivative of x over 8? Now don't jump right to a quotient rule here. Let's think about what we can do here. We can actually factor out a 1 over 8. And we can say this is equal to negative 1 over 8 times the derivative of x. Okay, no need for a quotient rule there. That, that'll be overkill. You could do it. You'll get the right answer, but there's no reason to right now. Okay, because the denominator is a constant function. If the denominator is constant, you can factor it out, then take the derivative of the resulting numerator. Okay. So let's see here, the denominator of the entire compound fraction, this will be 1 minus, let's see what, x squared over 64. Now, we're going to need a little more room here. Let's say we have, okay, that still have that 9 out front, but then we just have the derivative of x, which is 1, times negative 1 over 8, times 9. We might as well just go ahead and, and uh, call that what it is. On the numerator, we're just going to have negative 9 over 8. Okay, 9 times 1 eighth, well, 9 times negative 1 eighth times the derivative of x, which is 1, you get just not negative 9 eighths. Now, in the denominator, we just have, you know, nothing changes immediately. We have 1 minus x squared over 64. Now again, we, this is our derivative. It's, it's not simplified at all, so we're done taking derivatives. Um, but we want to write this in simplest terms. Um, you know, clearly we have, a, uh, we have a fraction on the top, so we need to write this as a single fraction instead of a compound fraction. So we have a fraction on the numerator divided by this radical. So this will end up being, you know, if we flip this denominator and then multiply, we get negative 9 over 8 times 1 minus x squared over 64. Okay, now I think there's a little bit more we can do there. Um, 
you know, I have a fraction in here. I don't really like that. Oh, I bet, I bet here's the best way to do this. Think about this. If I wanted to uh, multiply by eight, like I wanted to write this as a single radical on the bottom, how could I do that? I could say that eight is the square root of 64, right? Eight equals the square root of 64, correct? Well, then look what I can do. I could say that this is equal to negative 9 over the square root of 64 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 64. Okay? But now, what do we, what do we know about radicals? If we have two radicals with the same index, these are both square roots, we can multiply the radicands if we multiply the radicands and write it as a single radical, we get negative 9 over the square root of 64 times 1 minus x squared over 64. Yeah, this is going to look a lot better. Okay, So now we can say this is negative 9 over the square root of 64. Now what's 64 times uh, x squared divided by 64? It's just minus x squared. And there you are. Done. Okay. Now we, we, we had the derivative at this point right here. That is the derivative. The problem is just it's just not simplified. Okay. So we want to simplify this as much as possible. Now we get to this step right, the next step, uh, I mean, it's, it's decently simplified, but completely simplified is this right here. Okay, we have one main fraction, no other fractions on the, you know, on the, on the main numerator or main denominator. There's only that single fraction I think that looks good. Okay, so just be careful with that simplification. You know, the simplification is most of the battle, most of the time. Of course, you have to make sure to memorize your derivative rules and to employ them correctly. But a lot of times, it's the uh, simplification afterwards or sometimes before. That's that's the uh, that's that's the challenge. So, if you need any more help with this, just let me know, and uh, feel free to always ask questions. Talk to you soon.